good morning. We're so glad to have you back here in Ramshill Chapel once again. And we are thrilled to have with us uh, Father Larry Reckla to speak with us this morning. You'll get more of an introduction about him in a moment. I uh, want to remind you, next week uh, we'll have Pastor Josh Heisman from New Hope Community Church in Brentwood, Tennessee will be here with us. And so that's exciting. He'll bring a great message. He's bringing his worship team with him as well, so that's a blessing. A uh, few things to know. Tomorrow night at 6.30, we're going to have a community event right here in the chapel with Father Reckla. He's going to share his story and the story of those who have, uh, he's encountered uh, through the 9-11 events. And it's going to be a, a blessing to hear. And so I uh, ask you to either be here or pray for it. Uh, Saturday, September 11th, uh, uh, there will be a flag dedication at the Mass Comm building. What time that was going to be? 2 o'clock. 2 p.m. in the afternoon on uh, September 11th, we'll have a dedication of the flag uh, in front of the Mass Comm building. So I ask you that if you're around, please come and be a part of that. It would be great. Um, so uh, there will be a reception after that is, uh, at 6.30, I think, for the first responders in the area. But uh, again, just super glad that you're here and uh, glad to be part of this great convocation time. If you don't care, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. And then we're going to turn everything over to our School of Music staff and faculty. All right, let's, let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for the opportunity we have to gather together once again. And uh, Lord, we pray that uh, you keep all of us safe and in your care. Lord, we thank you for Rev Reverend and Father Reckla that he will come and share with us. And we just pray your blessings on him and his ministry. And Lord, this day, uh, we give you all glory and honor and praise. And just, uh, just cover the entire rest of this week. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, good morning. We are excited to have an opportunity to come and, and worship together. My name is Corey Bonds. I'm a director of bands down in the School of Music. And we've got many of our School of Music faculty up here with us this morning. Uh, just an opportunity for us to come and, and worship together. Don't miss that together part. We invite you. If you're here to get convo credit, check that box off. We pray that you're here to worship our King and Savior this morning because we have an opportunity to do that. Listen to the words from the psalmist in Psalm 103. The Lord is compassionate and gracious. He's slow to anger and he's abounding in steadfast love. He will not always accuse us or be angry forever. He's not dealt with us as according to our sins, deserve to be repaid, nor has he dealt with us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his faithful love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. We're going to sing a hymn this morning together. It's titled, His Mercy is More. The first verse is, What love could remember no wrongs we've done? Our God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He counts not their sum. He throws our sin into a sea without bottom or without shore. Our sins, though they are many, his mercy is more. We invite you to stand and join along with us as we sing. Thrown into 
Good morning, everyone. New every morning, new mercies I see. It is my delight to welcome two friends, really. Um, one of our MTH Master of Theology uh, students graduated in December 2019, Becky Chapman. She'll be praying at the end of our service today. Uh, uh, she spent 20 years at, uh, with Mickey Mouse in Orlando, Florida. Anybody been there? And, uh, but now she is deacon uh, uh, and assistant uh, for our speaker, uh, Father Larry Reckler. But Becky, uh, Reverend Becky Chapman, deacon at uh, St. Francis Episcopal Church in Bushnell, Florida. Reverend Lawrence, or Larry Reckler, is currently priest in charge at the St. Francis Episcopal Church in Bushnell, Florida. He has served as a priest at churches in Florida, New York, Pennsylvania, Utah, Colorado, New Mexico? No. Uh, Rev Reverend Reckla is the director of the Florida chapter of the Society of Holy Trinity, a Lutheran ministerium dedicated to the renewal of Lutheran churches and ministries. Uh, he's a 90, 1972 MDiv grad of Lutheran Theological Seminary at Gettysburg. He has a long history as a chaplain. He's only been paid a couple years to do it, uh, but that is in his heart. His DNA, uh, spiritual DNA, is uh, to render spiritual care. And uh, he's currently with the Wildwood Police Department as a, a chaplain, uh, the Villages in Florida, um, fire and rescue chaplain. Uh, when he was in New York, and he's going to be unpacking this, he was part of the New York Critical Response Medical Service. He was a clergy liaison with the New York City Police, uh, American Red Cross uh, chaplain at the temporary morgue, the World Trade Center, uh, was a chaplain involved with the American Airlines uh, flight out of JFK, flight 587, hospice and hospital chaplain, um, and other work with, with police, uh, and of course, all of the licensure certification that, that requires over a number of years, uh, he has done that. And uh, Reverend Reckla had been pastor at Trinity Lutheran Church in the Astoria section of Queens, New York. Anyone from Queens here today? Okay. Uh, uh, and he'd been there for two years when the World Trade Center was attacked by terrorists. Uh, nearly 20 years ago now. And so he was experienced uh, with working with survivors and rescue personnel on disaster sites. And so he recommend, uh, he, he um, volunteered his services to the Red Cross and began working at Ground Zero. You are going to hear more about what happened in the aftermath of that tragic day in the United States, September 11, 2001. And so please... Welcome to our stage, uh, Father Larry Reckler. God of Mike, it's great to be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that Episcopal shorthand for good morning, hi, how are you? So, there is part of the events of 9-11 that I deliberately am not paying much attention to, and that is the day of 9-11 itself. Many people think of 9-11 would be done by mm, early October. My work on Ground Zero was in the temporary morgue. And I closed the temporary morgue. We finished work June 2nd, 2002. That's how long that was. The particular story and testimony that I'm interested in, a vow I made to the men and women that I worked with, 
was to tell of the story of the recovery effort. The fact that in that period of time, every bit, B-I-T, every part of human remains that came out from the site was blessed by a chaplain when the bag was opened and blessed when it was closed. That blessing and that prayer was done without knowing whether or not the part that was before us was from a Baptist, a Lutheran, an Episcopal, uh, 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 that, that was not what we were about. What we were about was the, if you want to deal with life, if you want to deal with living, deal with death in a way that's clear and plain. One of the, well, been talking about this. Let me see. I'm looking at you, and the fact of the matter is 99% of you have no clue whatsoever of the events of the day. You weren't born. And if you were born then, how old would you have to be to have any appreciation or understanding of what's going on? So it's not my intent to somehow bridge that gap, but figure it this way. The COVID plague that we're dealing with now. 20 years from now, that would be what? 2041? Okay. How would you explain to 20-year-olds when you're 20 years older? What would you tell them? How would you have them understand, appreciate? But there's a bite even with that. 20 years from now, if I'm lucky, I'll be dead. Resting in the Lord and with my beloved. 20 years from now, I kind of hate to break it to you. You might be dead. There will be people who have worn a mask alone in a car, taken all the vaccinations, eaten nothing but pure food, picked by virgins on a full moon, who will die before 20 years are up. And they'll be surprised. There will be others who've never worn a mask, who somehow believe all of this is a joke, they may be dead too. We won't be surprised there. But the fact is, one of the things out of 9-11, today's the eighth, right? There were people alive today in 2001 who in three days would be dead. And the best that we could do for them is promise that the remains would be dealt with in a sacred and blessed way. One of the other pieces of 9-11, if you will, was the tapestry of how things weave together. There were people on 9-11 who were alive because they had a toothache and didn't go to work. 
there were people alive because they overslept. There are many things that weave through that. For instance, there is an Air Force base in San Angelo, Texas. Goodfellow Air Force Base. It is the Department of Defense School for Fire Suppression. And it came to pass in the immediate days after 9-11 that the people at Goodfellow Air Force Base and indeed a shopping mall in San Angelo put together two, three tractor trailer loads of supplies to come to New York for first responders. And they showed up. And the response that they got was, we can't handle it, go away. Really? The chief of an EMS unit, for whatever reason, knew there was a church in Astoria that had a parking lot. It's as much as he knew. Hello? Yes. You got a parking lot? Yes. We've got supplies. Can we use you? Yes. Yes. And for four days, ambulances, police cars, fire trucks came by that church where I served to pick up supplies and materials. And I took out to the chief who was in the car overnight now and again a piece of cold pizza. I'm such a saint. Uh, and he appreciated that. And it turned out that as things went on, that the staff from St. Angelo, from Goodfellow Air Force Base, came to New York City to have a 9-11 service. It was at the parish where I served. I've presided at church services where in order to get in, you needed a badge or a weapon. That, that, that's not usually the requirement to scan your ID and get credit than you would have. So they came, and actually in that parish, it had been used once before, September 25th. American Airlines and United Airlines had their New York service in the parish that I served there. That's what they did. And the relationships that I developed with American Airlines were what caused me to be activated and go to Kennedy when the Flight 587 went down. So it came to be that with all manner of military cops and all that in, there was a gift given to the parish acknowledging that service. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Tapestry, remember? How things weave together in many strange ways. The deacon at St. Francis who worked for 20 years for Mickey now works for Donald Duck. In the, and, and by the way, if you want ecumenical, I'm serving in an Episcopal parish, right? I'm Lutheran, conservative Lutheran, member of a religious order, serving in an Episcopal parish. And one of the crosses that I have is a pectoral cross that was given by Cardinal Archbishop Cook to priests in his diocese. Friends, you don't get much more than that. With the exception, people who dress like skunks now and again can get snooty because they get involved with liturgy and tradition and all of that stuff and seem to think that anyone other than <clears throat> them is, oh, what would you call it? Baptist. 
something like that. So it came to be in terms of a Lutheran serving in an Episcopal parish with an Episcopal deacon who needed a master's in theology. And she chose what I describe as the Princeton of Baptist universities. I don't know whether that's true, but I'm sticking with it. And so gets involved here. And as I see and saw the kind of learning that she was getting, the truth is, and I hate this, the truth is she got a better master's education in religion and theology here than she would have at the Lutheran seminary that I graduated from, or any Episcopal one. Thank you for that. And so it came to be that she got to graduate. Well, her husband, friend of mine, is involved in electronic works with non-governmental agencies. Some of you will understand what that means. That means it's involved with material that you don't talk that much about. Was unable to be here for graduation. So, time for Donald Duck to fill in the blank. The picture that they had up here of me is a picture of me from being, when was graduation? Right. right. Never ask me how long ago something was. It's not good. From the process of that, a conversation and relationship developed with Reverend Dr. Hurgeon, and lo and behold, got him to come to a Society of the Holy Trinity retreat, and he did very well with that. He did not break out in a rash with any number of cassocks, sashes, surpluses, chasubles, and copes. Did good. That's the connection of me to here. The flag that was given to me and the parish I served in New York I had up on the wall a transept where when you came in the church you couldn't see it, but when you returned from altar you could. For whatever reason, and I'm going to be uncharacteristically kind and silent, those tend not to be skills of mine, as to why it would be that they took it down. And I said, so where is it? It's in a closet. I won it. Okay, we have to go through policies and procedures. Sure. I got it. I thought about giving it to the seminary from which I graduated, Gettysburg. Are you ready for this? They don't have a flagpole. They don't have a flagpole. Gettysburg College invited me at one point to do 9-11 stuff, and I was able to get for them. At Gettysburg College, there's a building called Old Dorm. It was there during the Civil War. And the flag that flies from Old Dorm since Civil War times is the flag that would have been flown in the Civil War. And some years ago at Gettysburg College for one day on September 11th, a flag was flown from SOCOM, Strategic Operations Command, Herbert Field out of, uh, out of Florida, Special Operations where I have some connections for there. But for you, for this place and what you do for the love of God and the proclamation of the, uh, the proclamation of the gospel. I want to be able to tell the men and women that I worked with, 
on the pile in the pit doing, we don't need to go there, to let them know that there's a place like this and people like you. Flag holders? Open that puppy up, please. I do funerals at National Cemetery in Bushnell in Florida. Part of what's involved in services there is that when the flag is presented to survivors, they open the flag in its entirety, show it, And that for you, for me, lets me talk to people that I was in peril with and to say there's a place like here and people like you. Don't you forget it. Reverend Sir, well, fold it up, guys. Notice I'm having them do that. I know it's supposed to be done right. I'm smart enough to know that. I'm also smart enough to know, homie don't know how to do it. For the first couple months at Ground Zero, only body bags from members of service had American flags on them. By about November, that was changed. And any body bag that came out from the pile or the pit had an American flag on it. Dr. Hurgen has the citation from Goodfellow Air Force Base. If you want an additional citation from me certifying, blah, 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 we can do that as well. You know the expression, good enough for government work? Thank you. Reverend Doctor. Would you please, for the work that I and many others did, acknowledge the way that death was dealt with in God's good name and allow us to be proud of you and you, sir. And one final thing, to quote that great Baptist theologian, Snoopy, from Peanuts, there is a meme that shows Charlie Brown 
and Snoopy. And I'm talking to you. When I said 20 years from now, not all, not most, not many, maybe not even some. Some will be dead. Remember this. Charlie Brown says, we only live once. Says Snoopy, the Baptist theologian, wrong. We only die once. We live every day. Let your life, your life, for whatever you've got, for whatever I've got, for however much time we have, be an occasion more of alleluias than complaints, more of serving than bitching about not being served, more of dealing with others in a way of clarity, challenge, and comfort than whining and sniveling. Let your life with mine in some small way this day be touched by knowing that there are people on this planet who walked into death for the sake of saving strangers and died for it and were dealt with in a way of blessing and glory and for all of us. Come, Lord Jesus, and join us in love, in laughter, in life. Amen. And I am, I am a very proud CU alumni, so I'm thrilled to be here today. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for your many gifts and blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to gather today in remembrance and in learning. Pour out your spirit on those gathered here. Bless their studies and their endeavors. May their time here draw them closer to you. Send them out into the world enriched in mind and in spirit. Encourage them, protect them, and be with them today and always. We ask all of this. In the name of your most precious Son, Jesus. Amen. <laughs>